everybody, it's Rob from Man Sewing, and I've got a little bonus video for you that might actually turn into a tutorial. What you're looking at here is my busted djembe. That's right, this is an African drum that needs a reskinning. I have learned as a traveling artist and presenter, one of the best things for me to do to keep my brain kind of sane or insane, which is what makes man sewing so fun, right, is having my arts and craft project that is not really work related. So I am actually going to film reskinning this djembe. So this is an African drum that my wife and her dance class actually utilize in this one. to walk you through how to do this drum. So you've seen that the skin was soaking overnight and that's to get the, the calf skin. Um, excuse me, I said calf. It's a goat skin and that's right. We're using goat skins on our djembe and I bought mine at a local percussion shop. So if you can find a local shop, of course, you want to support them. If you can't and you've got this kind of project, of course, you can find them online. You're going to make sure that your skin is much larger than the diameter. So you're going to measure across here. I think this is an 11 inch djembe. So I have a skin that's like 17 inches. And I'm going to break this down in a second where I start undoing all the rope work. And then we're going to put the wet head back on. We're going to let it mold and form. Then we're going to put a little tension on it after a few days of completely drying and curing again. And then we're going to shave the fur off. That's right. You saw there was fur on my new skin. And the fur is supposed to help them be stronger if we shave them ourselves. So that's another tip I learned. I hope I'm correct. This is not the first time I've reskinned this drum, unfortunately. And um, then I'm going to walk you through tightening it up and putting the tension in on and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully this is an awesome tutorial. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but I'm going to try to get it all on film. Here we go. Okay, so my first step is basically just getting this cord. And on the djembe, you're working with a shell, the wood part. You're working with a head, the drum part, or the broken part of mine. You've got a lower ring, and then there's also two upper rings. There's a ring in the skin, and there's a ring up here that the ropes go through. And then all of this rope is technically one entire piece, other than the handle I put on here. And the rope itself is, is actually able to be put in here, and these diamond patterns are created to add the tension to get the djembe to have its three distinctive sounds. That's one of the things that makes these drums so awesome, is they have three very distinctive sounds that the, the player will get out of it. So I'm just going to start working this rope off, and then I'm going to start taking this tension out of my verticals to get the rings completely disconnected. So you can't just loosen these. We're going to actually have to take all of these completely out. Again, it's all one big piece of rope, but this is going to allow us to put those head and those rings back on correctly. So I'm going to go all the way down, just pulling it through. And we can't do much damage right now because the head's already ruined. Yeah, I'm getting this uh, last loop out right now. So this bottom ring you're going to start to see becomes free. Now on both the bottom and one of the top rings, you're going to see these loops here. Okay, do not untie those. You do not need to do anything with those. We want those to all be in position for when we connect this back together. Okay, so the rope is free. Now the two heads are gonna come off. You can see the shell in there, that's pretty cool, huh? And now you can see we have the two rings and, and then here we are peeling this other metal ring out from inside of the head. And then this one here has some this nice thick rope around it as well, a little padding. This is the skin itself, and you can see that there is the skin side, and here is the real hair, the outside of our goat, or what was a goat. And I'm just now going around and trying to look to make sure this is basically centered. And yes, it's going to be hair side up. Then I'm taking the inner ring, the ring that's going to be hidden, and I'm literally dropping it down just about a half an inch or so around this top. Okay, so just a little bit of a reveal and we just want to make sure whatever we do, we keep it totally symmetrical, if at all possible. And now my outer ring here is going to sit on top of this, but the skin itself is going to come up through here. So now what I have to do is kind of work this ring together keeping this ring above my lower ring, getting the skin on its way out. And I believe I've mentioned that this is still damp. I let the water 
kind of run out of it for a couple of hours, so I haven't dried it or anything, but it's not soaking and dripping wet. And I'm just going to kind of work my way around. Okay, so with my method, and like I said, this is probably not the professional way of doing it, but I want to help keep my rings nice and centered and square across the top. And I, at the end of the day, I want about a finger's width, maybe that first gap of my finger, to be below that ring and that head. So I need to be able to pull a little bit of tension. And then also, while I'm pulling the tension out, I can get some of these ripples that are out of the skin. So I'm going to slowly work the rope back into position, but keeping it very, very loose. So let's show you how to put this rope on. Okay, I'm going to feed in and out, and I'll bring you in for a close-up in just a second. And then I just pull this rope through, and while I'm doing this, I'm holding the ring at the bottom to keep it square. And I'm also making sure that when I finish that there's not much twist in the rope. Then I'm going to start working out these ripples that happen in the skin before the skin gets dry and starts to get nice and firm. Because you can see, over the years, those ripples just never quite go away. And um, that can actually make your skin uh, bad. You can see, I think, this might have been what caused my skin to rip early on as I had a pretty bad crease in there. I'm not sure. Like I said, this is not something I do professionally. Quilting, on the hand, other hand, is something I do professionally. Okay, I've got it all but smoothed out here. I don't have quite the reveal, so I can start to tighten the ropes up a little bit. And in order to do that, let's just back up a little here. We're going to go right back to the very first one we started on. This one here. And I'm going to pull down from the top. Let that slack come up. And I'm literally just going to pull little bits all the way around the drum and make several passes around the drum to keep everything nice and uniform. Applying just a little bit of tension. Reminder that the head is still pretty pliable. You can see how quickly you start to develop some slack. Keep the rope twist out if possible. Keep working the little swirl out of the rope. And at this point as we're starting to get this also, make sure that your rope slats are running nice and parallel. I've always been most fascinated by this whole concept of a single piece of rope for all this kind of work. And now looking to make sure that enough of the head is going to come through. My hand's going to hit on my knuckles there, on the underside of my knuckles. So I'm going to want to be able to get in there for just a little bit more of that rim. So that, but I do want that to pull down pretty nice and tight. I think I'm good. I always overdo it in the past. So I think I'm going to learn to trust and leave it there a little bit. I got down on the ground so I can pull some serious tension on here. And I've gone through and done all my straps. And you can see now I've got about a finger's width below that ring all the way around. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare to trim away the excess of this. But I'm also going to shave it and I'm going to try this. I got one of these trimmers a long time ago actually for cutting embroidery out. I'm just going with the grain of the hair. So it's literally been about five solid days of curing and now you can hear that where I trimmed back the head, back down to the rings, it's nice and crusty. It's getting all firmed and in shape. So now next step is I'm going to go through and one more time pull all the rest of the slack out of these uprights and then I'm going to show you how to put the little diamond shapes and diamond patterns in to get the right tone. So right Okay, coming into those last few, you can see I've got a few extra inches of slack I've been able to pull out of the line as it cured over the last few days. Obviously have it on a rug. I'm going to start sitting on the drum and I'm going to come up here and begin getting ready to pull my diamond shapes. Now for my diamond shapes, I'm going to go over two ropes and I'm looking in between this joining area here. So I'm actually pulling two different groups of ropes together and I'm going to go 
over the second one, back underneath both, pull it all the way through, and then underneath the last one again. So that begins to pull that diamond shape. Now I'm going to line it up with my drum, move the camera in a little closer to show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over both of them, and I'm coming back underneath this second one, and I'm going to go underneath both on the way back. So you can take the slack out of the line at the top, Before you make sure you pull the slack, you want to make sure you've gotten it right. So you pull that and twist, and then I'm just going to line these lines up to make it look pretty. Over time, I actually might pull a second series of diamonds into this drum. So over the last one, under them both, <laughs> check to make sure I got it right, and I did. Listen to this now. Hear that pop? That's what you're after.